welcome to EHS MedEd. Today's topic is gene imprinting. Well, let's get right into it, shall we? Genetic expression is a complex process in which no one process applies to all genes. In some cases, the gene is expressed differently from the maternal and paternal allele. In these cases, it is the different proteins produced working in conjunction with each other that allows for the desired phenotypical response. This form of expression usually occurs in the genes responsible for causing human growth, with the maternal allele inhibiting growth while the paternal allele stimulates growth. In this segment, we will discuss a group of genetic abnormalities referred to as imprinting. Imprinting is the process when a parental allele is preferentially silenced according to its parental origin. Now this can happen many different ways depending on which gene is affected. Imprinting specific disorders are caused in roughly 80 genes. However, today we'll be using Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome and Silver-Russell syndrome as examples. These two disorders are discussed together as they are the reverse of each other due to the causal gene being the same for both, with the paternal allele being overexpressed in Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome and underexpressed in the Silver-Russell cases. These disorders can be caused by three different mechanisms, chromosomal rearrangements, aberrant methylation patterns, or uniparental disomy. Imprinting causing chromosomal rearrangements can come in two forms, deletion or duplication. The former of the two occurs when one of the parental alleles are deleted, resulting in expression of purely the other parental allele. In duplication, the expressed allele is duplicated, resulting in the overexpression of that allele. The aberrant methylation patterns are more complicated in mechanism. In the case of many complex proteins, multiple genes are involved, and methylation patterns causes the expression of certain genes and the silencing of others. Usually this allows the same set of genes to code for a large variety of proteins. When you have aberrant methylation patterns, the wrong areas become methylated, causing a different combination of genes to be used. In this case, it can cause the parental allele to alter expression to match the corresponding allele. The final mechanism, uniparental disomy, can occur in one of two ways, the first of which is heterodisomy. This is what happens when you get a non-disjunction in meiosis 1, leaving no chromosomes in one daughter cell and two paternal and two maternal in the other, so that after meiosis 2, there are only two zygotes formed rather than four, and each one has one chromosome too many. Although under these circumstances, each chromosome pair is one maternal and one paternal. This results in trisomy with one too many of one of the parental alleles causing overexpression of the corresponding protein. The other mechanism is isodisomy, where you have normal meiosis 1, so both daughter cells contain two chromosomes, but there is a non disjunction in meiosis 2, resulting in a zygote that has two chromosomes, two normal zygotes, and one with no chromosomes. This still has the same overall effect as the heterodisomy. The condition Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome is caused by the overexpression of the paternal allele, resulting in overgrowth, herniation of the abdominal contents through the abdominal wall, visceromegaly, macroglossia, hemihypertrophy, earlobe pits, urogenital abnormalities, neonatal hyperglycemia, and embryonic tumors. Fortunately, the intelligence of people affected by this condition is usually not affected. In the case with beckwith wiedemann syndrome, both the chromosomal rearrangement and paternal uniparental disomy mechanisms are fairly straightforward, so I'll only go over the aberrant methylation patterns in more detail. First thing you need to know is that the regions affected by the methylation patterns consist of four genes, CDKN1C, LIT1, IGF2, and H19. The methylation points in this area are at the start of the LIT1 gene and just prior to the H19 gene. Let's call these positions 1 and 2 respectively. Under usual circumstances, position 1 is methylated on the maternal allele, allowing expression of only CDKN1C and H19 with a CTCF molecule at position 2, whilst position 2 is methylated, allowing expression of just LIT1 and IGF2 on the paternal allele. There are two ways in which an aberrant methylation pattern can disrupt the maternal allele, the first of which is hypermethylation of position 2, causing conversion of the genes expressed to LIT1 and IGF2. With all four genes being expressed, the maternal allele is essentially expressing both growth promoters and suppressors, resulting in a 2 to 1 scenario. In the second mechanism, you get hypomethylation of position 1, resulting in the CDKN1C and H19 not being activated. This means that the only genes being expressed are the growth promoters in the paternal allele. When the maternal allele is getting expressed over the paternal, the resulting disorder is Silver-Russell syndrome, the characteristics of which are intrauterine and postnatal growth retardation, relative macrocephaly, small triangular faces, prominent foreheads, clinodactyly of the fifth finger, and asymmetry of their head, trunk, and limbs. 
In this circumstance, the hypermethylation of position 1 activates CDKN1C and H19, resulting in twice the expression of growth suppressors to growth promoters, or similarly to Beck with Wiedemann syndrome. Hypomethylation of position 2 disables the whole paternal allele, so only the maternal counterpart is still able to express its genes. Silver-Russell syndrome does, however, have one major departure from Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, and that is not caused by uniparental disomy. Well, that about wraps up today's discussion. I hope you have learned something listening to me, and thank you for sticking with me.